Moving up to be this hardcore. Are you men up to be this hardcore? Who you been since the day? Diamond here, uh, Tony Diamond Tene. Excuse me, I keep forgetting to throw that Tene thing in there. You know, uh, everybody calls it Tenny, but it's really Tene. So uh, it's Monday, and uh, I'm having an excellent Monday. I hope you guys are too. Uh, you know, I got me some coffee. I got me a fancy. You know, and I'm in pretty good shape here. You know, I even brought this. I even brought this bad girl, this bad boy along. So uh, this weekend we shot our first match, our first USPSA match this weekend. And I shot a carry optic division, and like a lot of people, I was kind of on the fence about this thing. You know, I was kind of like, well, maybe it's gonna be hard. You know, maybe you know, I don't know what to expect. So I stayed open-minded. You know, and I gotta tell you, I, I really enjoyed myself shooting carry optic. You know, uh, I think it's a great training tool. You know, I think that uh, once you put that frame in front of the target, man, it really, really changes your view of things. You know. Uh, it's, it, you know, I didn't do too bad with it, really, you know, I mean, I, I did pretty good with it, you know, uh, I probably shot one of my better matches I've ever shot this weekend at, uh, Jonesboro Practical Pistol Shooters, uh, in Jonesboro, Arkansas, and, uh, you know, I had a blast, you know, good people, uh, good environment, you know, the match is just, I mean, you couldn't ask for a better match, you know, honestly, and, uh, you know, and I got to shoot, I got to shoot my M&P core, in a competition, and uh, man, this thing ran flawless. I mean, it didn't miss a beat all day. And then I, I put this thing to the ringer, you know. So, uh, the only thing I've ever done to this gun—I don't know if you guys have seen the other video—but I uh, put a new recoil spring in it. It's got 11 pound recoil spring, you know. And this thing's supposed to have like a four pound trigger, five pound trigger somewhere in here. Uh, it's a really good gun. Uh, I did add an optic to it. And, uh, you know, we got to talk about this optic thing, you know, I mean, honestly. Uh, I bought an RMR optic from a company, and I haven't, I'm not going to tell you the name of the company because I don't want to say anything bad about them, but uh, I'm going to let them make it right before I say anything, and hopefully I can give them a good review on this. Uh, during, the, during the match, I, uh, I think it was the second or third stage, the optic fell out the glass fell out of the optic you know I don't know if you can see it but there's a little, little red light down in there and it's still going you know so I lost the lens the lens popped out during the stage and I'll post a little video of this and uh, I didn't see it at the time because I fired I was shooting and when I went, I, when I went for the reload and I looked back to the lens I realized the damn thing was gone I realized the glass was was out of there and uh, that's you know that goes to another positive. This thing comes with really tall sights, so I can see the sights through the optic. So that really helped. If I didn't have these tall sights, my day probably would have been ruined. You know. And to be honest, I was looking for the front sight the entire time. You know, because as a production shooter, uh, you're always, you know, or just as a shooter in general. You're always looking for that front sight, you know, equal sight, equal light, down the barrel, you know, and uh, so that was the only downside. But the plus side was is that they come with these, these extremely tall sights, and that really helped out. Yeah, uh, it helped out with the steel. I pretty much went one for one on the steel this weekend. I'm super proud of myself for that. Uh, man, I ran. I just ran the best that I. Really ever ran a match, you know, I, I felt comfortable, and I was super excited, and, you know, I got up there on the stage, and I could see, I was, I, I, I guess I'm getting to the point now where I can actually start to pick a stage apart, you know, and, and see how I want to shoot it, you know, and there was a, I know there was one stage that sticks out that I shot it different than everybody else, and it actually turned out pretty good, because I think, I think, you know, I'm not sure, but I think I ran it really, really good, really fast, you know, 
Yeah, uh, you know, I'm sure the production guys. I was watching most of the shooters in here, and I'll put a, I'll put the match in here. But uh, I was watching the shooters, and there was, you got on one corner, you could actually see all four targets down one side, and uh, you know, with a little bit of a lean, but you can get four targets from one, one place, and then you could just run and gun down the other side of the, the stage, and uh, I kind of picked it apart that way, where I was seeing other shooters running down through there, swiveling left to right, shooting targets. And, uh, you know, I felt pretty good about that, you know, because I was able to dissect that table part and, and, uh, shoot it, shoot it well, you know. Uh, I haven't really seen the results, so I'm not really sure how well I did at it, you know. I've seen the place card, you know, where we all play it, but, you know, I didn't see, you know, the stage breakdowns yet, so, uh, I'll look those up today. I probably should look those up before I did this broadcast, but, but, none, you know, nonetheless, you know, I, I I shot good. I felt good. Uh, I could see everything I was shooting. You know, I wasn't shooting it over my head, so that was, you know, that was a plus. You know, I mean, other than this little malfunction, the day was the day was flawless. You know, and getting to getting to hang out with the good guys and gals down at Jonesboro. I mean, it's it's one of the best places to shoot. I mean, I can't give these guys enough credit. You know, and I've met some really good friends down there, John and Ben and. And all the guys, you know, they, they really taking me in, taking good, 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 taking good care of me, you know, and become really good friends, you know, over the last year, you know, because I'm only in my second year here, you know, of shooting USPSA. So, you know, that's that's pretty cool, you know, that I can, that I've picked up so much, you know, and I can also now see the things that I'm missing, you know, like I sit there and watch back the video, you know, because I, I wear a head camera and a, one of the guys calls it a Marvin Martian head camera. We're a head camera, and my wife was there, my beautiful wife, Melissa, was there, and she was filming stuff from behind the line, and uh, I can sit there now, I can sit here now, and look at the video and go, okay, I can do this better, I can do that better, I can do this versus that, you know, uh, maybe I shouldn't do a mag change here, I should have done it here, you know, so, and that's really cool that I can, I'm to the point now where I can start to break things down, and see what it is, and know what it means, you know, so, you know, i didn't really slow down my pace all that much, I don't think. You know, I'll have to go back and look at some other videos, but I don't think I slowed down that much. I think he just shot better, you know, and I think the gun had a lot to do with it. And I did a lot of, I do a lot of dry fire, and I do a lot of airsoft training too. And uh, I really don't do a whole lot of live fire, you know, because, you know, it takes a lot of money to fire one of these things, you know. And uh, if you're on a tight budget like I am, you know, I'm going to shoot. 25, 28 matches this year, you know, ammo becomes a precious commodity, you know, so if I can find other ways to train without so much live fire, that's a plus to me, you know, so I mean, I can buy, you know, 10,000 BBs, you know, for my airsoft gun and shoot that thing all day long for, say, 20 bucks, you know, versus spending $300 or $500 to shoot this thing all day long, you know. So I think that's really been a plus. Uh, it helped me with my uh, accuracy game, you know. So I, I, you know, I feel really good about the direction we're going. So, and I'm uh, really excited to get back to Jonesboro next month. Uh, that will actually be my very next match next month is Jonesboro before we go to Boot Hill. And uh, I can't remember. I think we're either going to Rolla, uh, Rolla, Missouri, or we're going to Memphis, Tennessee. I'm not sure which one is in the books. So, but we're gonna try some steel challenge this year and. Uh, so I'll have two USPSA matches and then a still challenge match next month. So in the month of March. So, so I'm super excited about that. So, but uh, really like to thank everybody down in Jonesboro for, for hosting and putting on a great match. Uh, you know, this thing is, you know, I can't brag about this thing enough. You know, I pulled it out of the box and uh, she got a lot of attention. You know, so some of the guys were coming up when I was in the safe zone and or, you know, and. They were looking at stuff, and, you know, and me, I'm more than happy to let people, you know, you know, let people touch it, you know, and let people dry fire it, you know, because they you know, heard this bad boy, now, you know, so, you know, and anything I can do to make, make some positive exposure to a great firearm, you know, is, is good, you know, so, and we're all about uh, supporting and networking everything about the sport that we're in, you know, the guns, the the targets, you know, the people who make the targets, the people who set up the stages, the people who run the matches, you know, so, and we're all very down-to-earth and friendly people, and, 
you know, I got to shoot, uh, I actually got to shoot an open gun. Oh man, I almost forgot about this. My buddy John, he brought out a, brought out his Glock open gun, you know. I don't get into the whole, the, you know, Smith & Wesson versus Glock versus CZ versus, I don't, you know, I don't get into that, you know. With my cars, I do. I'm a Ford guy. I've always been a Ford guy and always will be a Ford guy. But when it comes to, to pistols, you know, I'm amazed by them all, you know, and what people can do with them, you know. I mean, I I got to dry fire an open gun uh, from another, you know, from another guy and a uh, uh, man and the trigger, I mean, the trigger on that open gun, I, I, I kid you not, you just had to touch the trigger. You know, it was a 1911 setup or a 2011 setup. <coughs> and there must have been, I mean, that much. I mean, there wasn't, I mean, that trigger must have been like a pound, maybe, you know. So I was just so amazed by that, you know, because this gun was just a work of art. It was all red and chrome. And, I mean, the thing was just awesome, you know. But uh, my buddy John, he let me shoot his open gun that he just that he just got, and uh, man, that's a whole new world, you know. And looking through his optic he had on his, I mean, it was just so much different than looking through this optic, you know. So every gun and every platform is so much different, you know. And these open guns, you know, I can see myself and say, you know, for maybe five years, maybe owning an open gun, you know, after shooting that one. It was a Glock, and I got to shoot about, I don't know, 15 rounds through it, you know, and it was just, you know, it was so, it took so much to get used to just, just to get the trigger right, you know, so, and, uh, man, it, it was amazing, you know, so, thanks, John, for letting me shoot it, uh, man, that was an experience, you know, so, I can't, uh, man, I can't wait to get back to John's world, I mean, I had so much fun, so much fun, me and my wife both did, and, uh, thanks to everybody down there, and, uh, and we'll see you guys next time.